yours. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me start the timer here. Cool. Uh, so yeah, thanks for the intro, Henry. I'm Nicolas Goutet. I'm really, really excited to be here. I uh, am a software engineer at Orbit. I am French and live in Paris. And I haven't watched that TV show because every Parisian apparently hates it for some reason. I uh, help organize the Jamstack Paris meetup uh, over here in Paris. And so it, it's very funny to be on the other side of the mirror for the Jamstack Toronto meetup. So today we are going to talk about this website. This website, Orbit.love, is uh, the website I bid for, uh, for Orbit, so my employer, and it's built with Eleventy. But it's, not, it's built with Eleventy and two other pieces of tech that I really also love, and uh, the, the three of them make, uh, in my opinion, a perfect match. I'm talking about Tailwind uh, CSS for Stailing and Alpine JS for uh, interactivity uh, through the website. So the website, uh, orbit.love, is very straightforward. We're a SaaS app, so there's all the like classic things, the solutions, the blog, the careers page, et cetera. Uh, and we wanted to have some uh, parts of interactive uh, pieces in it. So there's a sign-up form for the beta access. There's this mailing list subscription thingy. Uh, the, the menu, the navigation is also responsive and, and uh, makes this burger menu that's all animated with JavaScript. And so I chose uh, Alpine.js and Tailwind to power that 11 to website. And I'm going to show you why it's such a great match with an example. So here we have this little code snippet here that indicates that we have an API orbit and that <laughs> this is a sample okay. payload. So uh, you, you can use it for uh, testing the API. But I want to take that a step further. I want to do what some documentations website do, and I love it, is to have those little snippets available in several languages. So I want the JSON payload, which is great, but also maybe a curl version, a Node.js version, Ruby, Python, you name it, I would like to do it. So what we're going to do is build uh, in, uh, live coding, a uh, little uh, code snippet thing with a header that will appear up here. I, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but the header will appear just above the, uh, the code sample, and we will be able to switch between different languages for the same snippet of code. So for that, I'm going to jump right in to code spaces, uh, which I I'm currently trying and it's great. And it's also very cool for presentations. So this is the piece of code that powers that code snippet at the moment. Uh, we are using the highlight directive from uh, 11 t It's working great. Uh, but if we want to have the, the, the extra interactivity and the other uh, contents, then we will, have, we will have, sorry, to add some buttons. So I'm going to do a first version here, adding five buttons, one for each language. And if my setup is not broken, yeah, we should be here. This is the, the local host 8080 equivalent for GitHub code spaces. So we can see that it refreshed and that I have my buttons. They don't really look like buttons. The header is not there already. So maybe we can do a first pass at styling all that. And this is where Tailwind CSS got it. So Tailwind CSS in like 10, 10 seconds, it's a utility first CSS frameworks that instead of uh, building classes like dot button or dot main menu or something, you will uh, add small classes that do one thing and one thing only. So here I'm adding a padding uh, to the, the header type thingy. I'm uh, adding a color to its background. The color name is denim, uh, a border at the bottom and I'm changing the color of the text. And here it is. We now see our header. It's looking a bit prettier, but still the buttons do not look like buttons and I don't want to click on it. So we can skip to the next step and add some Tailwind classes to, the, to those buttons. Here we are adding a bit of margin to the right of each button, some padding uh, on the inside so that they don't feel cramped, uh, rounded corners, 
some colors and then a little transparency with BG opacity 25 so that they look a bit more vibrant. If we have a look here, now that's starting to look like something I would uh, want to click on. So for styling, um, Tailwind takes a little bit time to get used to because you have to learn that syntax, that rounded MD rounds the corner at a certain radius, that BG dash color dash something uh, is applying a color, BG opacity, the padding, the flex layout, etc. Once you get past that barrier, and I must mention that the docs uh, on Tailwind are outstanding, then it's crazy productive and I love it. But here we only got halfway through what we wanted because when I click on those little thingies, nothing happens. So we are going to call our friend Alpine JS to the rescue. So Alpine in 10 seconds, it's like a very lightweight JavaScript frameworks that allows you to do things that Vue and React can, like uh, 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 adding interactivity on a website. The, the important bits and pieces in this new version as are this one, X data. This declares an Alpine component. So everything that happens inside that div now is controlled uh, or can be controlled by Alpine. And I'm adding an attribute lang, which will be the language that the user selected and it will default to JSON. Now, how do I make it so that it changes when the user clicks on it? For each button, I add a at click directive here that will, when the button is clicked on, change the language to whatever the button is on. So if I click on that one, the language will switch to curl and now then Ruby and Python. And the last thing that we want is to make it obvious which button is currently on. And we can use the colon class uh, attribute also from Alpine that will allow you to uh, conditionally apply classes depending on a uh, particular uh, condition. So if lang equals JSON, then we change the background in the opacity. How does that look like? It looks like it works. So JSON is the default, but when I click on another button, the lang attribute gets changed and the classes gets updated. This still doesn't change the content of uh, what's inside. And so for that, we are going to use another very handy uh, directive from uh, Alpine, which is xshow. If you're familiar with Vue, everything here should be really familiar to you because the, the syntax is heavily inspired from Vue. So this xshow directive uh, uh, toggles the visibility of the component depending on the condition. So we will show the JSON snippets if and only if the language is currently JSON. I added a few dummy uh, things uh, on the other languages so that we can try it. And now if I click somewhere else, we can see that the language changes. So we can wrap that up by putting actual snippets of code that will be useful to the visitors of the website. Uh, this should rebuild. See how fast it is, I love it. And here we go. Now we have a curl, snippet, node, Ruby, and Python. What I really, really love about that setup is that it's crazy productive. Uh, once you, you pass the, the, the Tailwind syntax barrier, you can like type classes and, and uh, design components and layouts, etc. at really the speed of thought. And Alpine gets, it makes itself really discreet and it, it's really there to augment the HTML. So you can, you, you like sprinkle some interactivity on the HTML. But as you just saw, I never left my template file. The HTML structure was the core of what we were doing. Oh, cool. On that stack, so Tailwind 11T Alpine that I'm really, really happy about. Uh, I wrote a blog post earlier this week called Towards a Lightweight Jamstack that goes into a bit more details about how you might not want to pull in uh, a, a full-blown React or Vue framework for uh, simpler websites like the one we have here, where you only have small animations and not like full-blown state management. And this is really, for me, the 
the selling point for 11T because I'm, I'm also passionate about web performance that 11T doesn't care what JS you put it in. It doesn't force you on a framework. You can really do whatever you want. You can not use JS, use a framework if you need it. Uh, combined to, I think the Netlify, uh, yeah, the Netlify website uses some Alpine in some view. And so this is all great. And that stack, uh, Tailwind, 11T and Alpine, where is it? Uh, I tried to find it a cute name, uh, breakfast related. And so I, come, I, came, upon, uh, I came upon T-Stack. I like it, I hope you do too. And if you like it, yeah, then uh, please share the word. The whole orbit.love website is open source. So if you have, uh, if you're curious about how it works, how you can set up a site like this, please have a look, star it, fork it. Uh, uh, it we're uh, really open and I'm, I'm really happy to answer any question you might have. I am on Twitter at Fax. Should you want to ask questions? Uh, I'm tweeting uh, mostly about web performance, uh, the Jamstack ecosystem, some 11 c So if you're interested in any of this, uh, you can uh, give me a follow. And thank you very much. I'm still under 11 minutes, so that's great. Thanks, back to you, Henry.